Hi there, I'm Sandy Onlock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I am back with my AI series, Art Impressions Interactive Cards. This is the Circlet Trifold Cards, and I'm going to show you four different ways to use a Circlet Trifold. You can use your other Trifold Cards in similar ways, but there's four different new designs for this year, and these are, well, there's only four <laughs> Circlets so far. And my favorite is the lighthouse, but I'm going to show them all to you. So this one has a little cottage and you can see how each of the stamps kind of fills in the blanks on the other ones. And you'll see more about how that's going to go. This one I did as the normal trifold that I showed you in the last video. So I did the very same process, stamping the image, die cutting out that hole on the inside and then stamping the portion on the very inside of that one. So I'm not gonna re-show you how to do that because I just did that in the last video. And this is it after it was finished. So I watercolored it and it came out really nice, really simple kind of card to do. And it's really pretty with the little house and the fence and everything. So there's one of them. And I'm gonna show you some more different ways to lay out these stamps on another kind of card design. And this one's going to be the lighthouse and you can see how each one of these fits in. There's the rays that go in the second one. So we're going to, we're going to have some, some ray action. And this one, I'm going to make more of a booklet card. And first I cut my square card, my square card base out of watercolor paper. And then I cut one that's a little smaller, the four and a quarter by four and a quarter card and the four by four panel. And I did make a little area that I'm going to use to adhere this to the inside of my card. And you can see it's going to fit in there real nicely, nice and centered. Now to center one of these images on a square card, I was trying to figure out how to get my circle in right in the middle spot. So I measured the middle and then I took the middle of the outside measurements. It was a two and an eight circle. And then I just made myself little pencil marks. I can erase those later with a kneaded eraser, but it helps me to get the center all lined up, which is helpful on a card like this because you don't want your your thing to be all kitty wumpus. So I've got that first stamped and then I'll do my die cutting. Just tape that down with a little bit of washi tape. So this panel is the one that floats in the center and I traced my outside circle onto that so that it's going to stay in, in place in the center. And the die for that one has the little rays in it. So we'll die cut those. And then I'll move on and try to trace that onto the inside. Now on one like this, I'm only going to get little portions of that little area. So what I did was close the whole card and draw the circle from the outside. It's going to be easier to line things up. So the inside circle has something because otherwise it's just little tiny bits and pieces of lines. I'll show you the, the coloring and assembly of that at the end. But next we're going to look at the cabin. And again, there's three pieces, there are three circles, and I'm stamping them onto three die cut circles. The outside circle does not come with the, the stamp set. The little inner ones do. So I'm just gonna stamp them in the middle. I realized afterward, rather than fussing to try to get them all in the center of their circles, I could have die cut the circles afterward and just done them on square papers, but you know, sometimes I do things the hard way. And color and assembly will come in just a few minutes, but I'm going to get the other one stamped, which is the birthday one. And they're also going to go onto three circles. Again, I could have been smart and done them on squares and then I cut that out. But you know, I did figure out one other thing. And if there's for some reason where you're going to have to use this, here you go. Here's my silly idea, which was to cut a square of paper that's a little bigger than the circle. And then I can line the circle because here on the black paper, I can see that it's lined up in the center. So I've got it washi taped down. I turn it upside down. The circle that I've cut out of it is this a little bigger than the size of the stamp itself. So here now I've got it all in my mini misty and the stamp fits in there, but I can sort of feel that it just barely has room to wiggle in there and I can get it kind of centered because it fits within that circle. So that's how I did this particular one. And it did help when I got to the third one because there is text on there that I decided I wanted to mask off and I was going to use this. So I'll show you that in just a second. But 
you can see it works really simply. Just take the stamp, kind of nest it in there, and I can sort of feel when I'm in the center and stamp that guy. It doesn't matter that they're left, right, kitty wampus, because it's really all about just getting them in the middle for this particular one. Now here's where masking off those words was a little bit helpful, except what I realized is I was gonna have to wipe off the text anyway, because it's the tails of some of the letters were gonna fit down into that circle. And so there you go, <laughs> had to wipe it off. So I got a baby wipe and just carefully wiped off the outside print. And that way it, it has birthday text on it. I could make this a birthday invitation instead of a birthday card. And as with all the others, I'm gonna add my die cutting and put my little dies in the proper places and get them all cut out. Next up, we're gonna do some coloring. And I'm using my Zig Twin Touch pens, and these are water-based brush markers. And what I'm gonna do is use a mostly dry brush. Not completely, all I did instead of wiping off all the water was squish it between my fingers like that. And then I can pull that color from the outside edge and put it onto the color that's already there and pull it around the image and get some shading going, which is one way that you can use these markers. You can certainly use them direct to the marker and you color the whole thing in with them. And depending on how much color you put down when you're putting your first swatch of color down, you can get more or less color. If you want just a light shade, then put in just a tiny little mark of color and then let your brush carry the rest of that water around or carry the rest of the color around with the water. And so I'm just going to run around the whole thing and drop some colors in here and there, some bright, happy birthday colors. And you can see that is a nice way to make a birthday card. It's just pick out a bunch of colors and then throw in some. If you wanted to be quick and efficient, you could just throw in a whole lot of pink across everything. Do all of your purple, all of your blue, and then go in with your brush and watercolor all the pinks first and all the yellows first. Just make sure you clean the brush in between so you don't contaminate your yellow with your pink, etc and you can get those done a lot quicker than what I'm doing here, although this is sped up and I wish I could color this fast in reality because I would get so much more done. Wouldn't that be nice? So I'm just kind of finishing up a little bit around the edges. Now here's another way we're gonna do the same thing, wiping off some of that excess water so it's not totally smooshy and then pick up color that I've scribbled onto a palette and the palette is just an acrylic block. You could do that on a CD case or a piece of acetate or anything that you want. If you put something white underneath of it, it helps it so you could see the colors, which is always good to be able to see what you're doing. And here I'm using like blues and purples for my water, just kind of mixing a couple different colors. And I wanted to have my sky be dark on the inside because I want those white rays to show up. So I'm trying to to give myself enough contrast in these other things. And then when I get to the inside, I'm gonna make it more of a dark sky, my, more like a cloudy kind of sky that's gonna have a lot of color in it. Didn't leave my clouds really white, which started to bother me a little bit. I was like, wait a minute, what do I do now? It doesn't feel like clouds. But as it dried, it started to, and I also did dab off a little bit of extra color too. But just know that with these markers, they don't dab off particularly much. A couple of these need assembly, so I'm going to use some Be Creative tape, which is a very, very sticky tape whenever I'm doing anything with cards that are going to be touched and played with a lot. I use Be Creative tape, and especially with watercolor paper like I'm using. This is the Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. It's going to hold everything really well against all that texture. So I line up the outside first and then press down the inside. And you can see how beautifully it lines up, just nice and perfect. And then when I open it, I do want to press a little bit to fold it on that score line so that when my recipient gets it, it opens nicely for them. And then you can see the inside panel. So there's lots of different options for a card like this as well. You can use all kinds of patterned paper, make it a larger card, etc. I just made this tiny one. Now this one is going to be the birthday card slash invitation. And I'm gonna line up all three panels so that they're the way that I want them vertically. 
with balloons and stuff, they can be kind of any angle. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight either because it's crazy birthday stuff. Just make sure your cake is straight. And then I'm going to poke a hole through it using a craft pick. And that hole is going to allow me to put a brad in. So I'll turn over and splay out the brad tines on the other side. And then it opens this way. Which is kind of a fun and unique way for a card to open. And if you stamp your invitation portion on the back, then it's the cutest little invitation ever. Who's not going to come to your party if you do that? And this one is a variation on that. So we're going to take the cabin one. And we're going to poke the hole just through the top two panels first using the craft pick and then put a brad in that one and splay out the tines on the back. Get it all nice and flat. And if you want to tape it, you kind of can, but it's not all that necessary. But sometimes it'll help to keep this one from catching when you open it the other way. So then I put the other one place it where it's supposed to be when it's closed and then I'm going to poke the hole through just the back two panels and put the brad on that one instead and only put it on one side and that allows me then to telescope it a different direction and have it open a different way. And one flips out to the upper left or I guess the upper right depending on which way you decide to spin it and then the other comes out the other direction. It does mean that the one on the bottom is going to be upside down-ish, but I don't think it matters to me because I think it's really cute when it folds out like this and somebody's not going to be able to stop playing with it because it's so much fun. So here we are with the other ones. I'm going to remind you of the other ways you can use them. You can use it as a regular trifold with just outside, mid panel, and then inside and just have them fold into each other. You can have them be a booklet style like this again with any size card and do all, all kinds of crazy things but you get the idea of how to lay that panel in to create that middle page for it and then we have the circles that kind of play out in different directions and that's just so much fun I think I'm gonna have to have a party so I can invite people using an invitation like that and then we have this one that splays out the kind of different direction. Lots of fun ways that you can use trifolds and I know there's tons more so experiment and try it. Use these concepts and change it up. So here's some peeks at the other videos. This one was up yesterday. This was the the simple trifold that I told you about and I'll show you how to die cut that and those sorts of things. Then there's going to be these flutter cards. Lots of animals with wings and ears that fly and I love that Art Impressions makes all these interactive things. And then there's these ones with fun enclosures and they're called the Twist Ties. The links for all of them are going to be in the description down below in case you want to make one shopping trip for everything. But, you know, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm <laughs> trying to save you some shipping money. I will see you guys next time with the next in this series. Take care and have an awesome day. Go out and make something wonderful and send it to somebody else. Bye-bye.